Hello. This is a video, quadratic expressions and algebraic fractions. We're looking at factorizing using the difference of two squares. So the difference of two squares, let's say, uh, just remind ourselves of how we use the difference of two squares when expanding brackets. If you've got two brackets and you're asked to expand them and you've got one plus in there and one minus in there but the uh, the bracket items are identical other than that, um, then a special thing happens. We get a squared, the first term squared, minus b squared, the second term squared. So whatever the first term uh, is, it gets squared and put first. And then we put a minus and then whatever the second term is gets squared and put second. So that's when we're expanding. Now we're going to turn this on its head and sort of go backwards now. And if we have a think about how we might factorize using that result, if we start with something that is the difference of two squares, then we can factorize by putting the arrangement in of putting those two terms in one bracket with a plus in between them, and then having another bracket with uh, the minus in between them. So we can have the first term plus the second term in one bracket here, and then we can have the first term minus the second term in the second bracket. So we can have a plus version bracket and a minus version bracket using that first and second term there. Once we have the arrangement of having the first term being squared and the second term being squared, all that will become clear through some examples, I trust. So we'll keep all that arrangement in mind. If we can express something as the first term squared minus the second term squared, we can write them out with one plus in the bracket between them and one minus in the bracket between them. Let's have a look at a good example here. Factorizing x squared minus 9. Now there's nothing common there. Usually we'd look to see if there's a common letter or number, and we can't do that here. So this is a little bit of a clue that we should use this shortcut for the difference of two squares because we'd be stuck otherwise. We wouldn't be able to factorize otherwise. Nothing's common. So what we try and do is we try and express each of these terms as something squared. Now it's okay for x. It's already being squared here for the first term. But can we express it 9 as something smaller being squared I think you can see that we could express 9 as 3 squared so we can, if we write it out as x squared minus 3 squared then it fits into our arrangement which allows us to write out our terms in two sets of brackets one with a plus in between them and one with a minus in between them so we'll use the x and the 3 because they're uh, they're the terms once we decide to put them in the right format so that becomes now that's a difference of two squares, we can apply the shortcut here. We can have x plus 3, so that's a plus version, and x minus 3, that's a minus version. So that's pretty cool. If we can express as, uh, any uh, sort of arrangement as one thing squared minus another thing squared, we can write it out like this, with one plus version and one minus version in the brackets. So it's like the reverse of uh, how we were expanding these brackets to make x squared minus 9. If we can write one term squared minus another term squared, we can have, an, have uh, the first term plus in one bracket and the first term minus in the other bracket. Now this is, we'll have to do a bit more work here. 16a squared. Now that's not one particular item being squared yet, so we'll have to be careful. And 25 we could express as 5 squared, couldn't we? So we're desperately trying to get one term squared minus another term squared. Now here we've got to express 16a squared as 4a multiplied by itself would give 16a squared, wouldn't it? So we've got to have one single item um, that's being squared. So we kind of square root the 16 and make it 4a squared. You can double check by squaring the 4a and making sure you get back to 16a squared. And 25 we're going to write as 5 squared. Now. So we've got the arrangement now of the difference between two squares, difference of two squares, so we can write out one version with a plus in between and one version with a minus in between. Okay, that was a bit trickier, but notice how we did it there. And another one. Now, this is going to be tougher. Now, a lot of students forget that the first question when we're trying to factorize is, you ask yourself, is there anything common numbers or letters between the two terms. So can we take out a common factor here? Now these are both even numbers, 18 and 2. So we know by the definition of an even number that 2 can go into it. So let's take out the 2 as a common uh, number first. 2 out of both of those terms. Now 2 out, we could express 18c squared as 2 times 9c squared minus d squared. So we look for a common factor first, 
to take out in the front. Now we'll work on just the bracket bit. We can express 9c squared as 3c all squared. 3c times 3c, 3c times 3c would make 9c squared, and d squared is already in the right format there. So this section here, we're going to write out with our arrangements of 1 plus 1 minus, and we'll just have the 2 separate out the front. So we'll have 2. Now that's the difference of 2 squares, we can have 2 out the front, we can have a plus version with our 2 terms, and a minus version with our 2 terms. So that's pretty cool. So that wouldn't have been possible if we didn't spot that there was something common between 18c squared and minus 2d squared that we could take out the front first and then the rest of the brackets could be uh, arranged into a first term squared minus a second term arrangement. Alright, now here's a quirky one. We have a bracket being squared and a 36 there. There's nothing common between this chunk here and this chunk here. So our only, uh, our only other desperate measure is to try and arrange it into one thing squared minus another thing squared. You might spot that 36 is a nice convenient number for that. So just leave the, let's leave the brackets as being squared because it's one term or one item being squared already. And we'll write the 36 as 6 squared. Now, can you see that that is uh, now in the difference of two squares arrangements? The first chunk is the x plus 2 being squared, and the second chunk is the 6 being squared. So we can write it out into our arrangement of 1 plus and 1 minus. So this is the first term with a plus in between it and the second term there. Now we'll have another lot uh, with a minus in between it. The first term is x plus 2 and a minus and then the second term. So you can see that we've got the first term here and here. We've got the second term here and here. We've got one of them having a plus in between them and one of them having a minus in between them. So it's a bit hard to see but it's still in this arrangement that we've been using all along in this video. Now as you can probably spot <laughs> There's a normal plus 2 and plus 6 beside each other, and yes, you're right, you can combine them. They're like terms, and you have a plus 2 and a minus 6 in this second bracket here. So we don't do this very often, but once we've got these brackets here, we can actually simplify further. It's pretty rare. So we just make that into x plus 8 from the plus 2 and the plus 6, and the second bracket will become minus 4. We have plus 2, minus 6 on the number, number line. Uh, minus 4. So that's pretty weird. If you expanded that out, you would get back to an arrangement that's very similar to this. So that's a bit of a strange one though, but uh, we're still following the rule. We're f still expressing it as one term squared minus another term squared, and you can see that this uh, follows, rule if you, follows the rule if you look carefully. So that's a strange one. <laughs> okay, there we go. Hope that helps. PeterBlakeMaths.com. We'll see you next time for some more wonderful maths videos.